Oh, Lord. <clears throat> Shall we pray? Gracious, loving God, we thank you for this community. We thank you for these folks who serve our community and pray that you bless them, that they will work for the common good of all. We thank you for our police and firefighters, EMTs, and all who uh, work so hard to make our community safe. We pray, God, that you be here in this place this evening, that you will guard these men and women and guide them to do what is best. This we pray in our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, written 56 complaints for trash. 
and we've taken in six complaint calls. So if uh, any members in your ward uh, have some uh, complaints or uh, find out if they have submitted those complaints to the property management, if not, let me or uh, let Donnie know and uh, we'll try to get taken care of for you. Uh, some other stuff going on. Uh, Victor, uh, Victor's been quite busy with uh, stormwater this month. Uh, outside of his normal realm is fire inspections, or fire inspections, excuse me, correction, building inspections, uh, school water has taken up the majority of his month. Uh, Bill, I need to get with you at some point, uh, evidently March 13th, uh, the new new per permit for uh, 2021, mm -hmm. that application is going in the end, that what I understand. You have to use proper blood for that? Yeah, I believe so. So. Uh, but with the that being said, uh, he was kind of sharing some information, and by all means, I don't want to steal your thunder if you have any. So, uh, Victor was just kind of letting me know that uh, for the state, uh, we're the smallest city that falls under requirements for stormwater. So, there's something we can put in our welcome mechanic brochure. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But I thought I'd share that information with you. Uh, other stuff that's been going on, uh, I have completed our AFG grant for, for this year. With that being said, our main goal this year was our SCBA. I've mentioned it before. Uh, we're going to be replacing, hopefully, uh, 34 units at a total price of 255000 So it'll be a great thing if we can obtain that and upgrade our existing SCBA. Also, I've applied for 24 sets of turnout gear, coming to a total of 57,000. Again, uh, with the council's uh, blessing, uh, this past month, month before last, that yes, we were getting our existing personnel up to snuff. However, right now I'm sitting on about 12 to 16 applications of part-time people wanting on. We just don't have the turnout gear for them at this time. So, uh, it'd be unknown as far as when we we get this grant. But again, it is a it's a it's a good problem to have right now for us. Uh, some other grant activity going on. Uh, share share this with you. Uh, we found out from Bradley Distributing. I think some of you know who that is. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out that Anheuser Busch has a grant program out there. So we we've talked with Bradley Distributing, and they're getting us the information. What we're pursuing is a uh, fire safety trailer uh, to assist in our fire prevention that we do throughout the schools. But this unit will be used in the springtime as well because it does have a weather platform that goes with it, showing kids what to do, and adults, uh, what to do in the event of emergency. And that nice little trailer unit is going to run about $157,000. Now again, Anheuser-Busch has that program out there, and Bradley Distributing said, hey, let, let's go for this. Let's see what we can do with it. So kudos to those folks from Peggy University. <coughs> Uh, what other things we got going on? We did uh, Thursday, uh, Boot Hill Regional Planning Committee will be meeting up in Dexter. I'll be going to that. Chancellor, uh, Mayor, if you'll be going to that as well. Uh, and hopefully, we'll get a little bit more information on our Station 2 to grants. Uh, they're supposed to be giving us some more information on that, how it's going for that. Other stuff happening. Uh, Found out through the school district. Uh, it's called the Jack Program. It's jobs. Can I get this? I wrote a note here somewhere. Someone help me out there. Eric's graduates. Thank you, audience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, found out that they have some some needs uh, that they would like to get some uh, students. Uh, they've become a little bit more involved as far as learning different techniques, uh, learning uh, different skills and one of the things we hit them up with was the clerical needs that we have at our administration office and they've agreed to it uh, again that's something I didn't know I need to bring before the city uh, I didn't know if the JAG program had ever been used utilized before for the city it would basically be a, a few hours during the day it would just allow them to uh, doing some filing for us as well as answering the phones in the administration office just kind of will let you all kind of know about that. Yeah, there's no cost to the city on that. No, there's no cost to it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> again, it's strictly for their benefit uh, that they can use use that as work experience. 
and it'll help them help them in their future. Um, one other note, uh, I've had a request from FCC Family Counseling Center. Uh, they have asked that down at Station Three, uh, what we commonly call the Pepsi Building, which now has a sign up there, by the way. I hope some of you all seen it. Uh, they're asking if they might be able to work with the city in putting up a digital sign. Right now, the Pepsi sign that's still sitting out there is, is not working. I talked with James uh, and Steve a little bit about that sign, about maybe getting it fixed at one point. But I was approached uh, last week, and FCC would like to sponsor a, a digital sign. Time, temp. Uh, the only thing they were asking is uh, they would like some form of lettering on it that just says sponsored by FCC. So I didn't know if the city wanted to entertain this uh, further venture with them or if that was even allowed or, or, or what our situation would be with that. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it's sure. <laughs> right. Small data from who sponsored it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that end of town is kind of a it's kind of a dark, uh, dark intersection, and we're kind of trying to look at. Uh, we will be looking through this year of uh, kind of sprucing up that station three, maybe getting with some local groups. Uh, I don't know, or different groups that uh, maybe into flowers or whatnot, and uh, kind of helping us do a little bit of landscaping out there, kind of get a little bit more community involved. In. So, anybody like to do that in formal motion? I'll make a motion for that. Second. <clears throat> a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, okay. Uh, upcoming training. I do want to throw this out here to, to you all and to anyone listening. Uh, that March 3rd, we will be having a weather spotters course uh, sponsored by the Duncan County Emergency Management, Kennedy Emergency Management, and it will be at the Methodist Church beginning at 6 30 uh, in their training facility. So, anyone that's interested, least bit interested in whether it's not just for first responders this is for for anyone out there so like 6 30. 30. Well, March 3rd we'll all be sitting in DC traffic. March 3rd? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I won't be my there. Okay. Well, thank you Mayor for putting me on the spot there. But... <laughs> all right. Other than that that's all I have at this time. You want to go over there? Uh, comp stuff sure, sure. You threw me off the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, industrial Committee, this is aimed with Marco and our safety officer in regards to the compress building removal, uh, removing compress buildings from the building schedule in <clears throat> Marma. I have a letter here by uh, Tyler Roberts, safety inspector. It's recommended to remove compress buildings 7, 8, and 9 in the City of Kennett's property schedule. This will bring the current coverage amount from $13,204 to slightly above $7,300,000. Uh, with Marmor's current premium schedule at $0.86 cents per $1,000 in value, by removing these buildings, it will lower the city's current premium it will lower it by $5,100. Those buildings, they said even if a tornado came through and tore them down, they would not pay for them even if they're insured. So, so basically we're paying for something that we're not going to get back regardless. Pretty much, yeah. Except, what about liability, the liability issue? I think we still got that. We still got that. So I just want to double check, but yeah. Those are the older buildings that were built in 1967 and something. Right. So, <coughs> so. so uh, do we need a uh, motion to do that? Uh, I will make a motion to take building 789 off of the property schedule so we can save $5,000 a year. I'll second it. Okay, we got a motion to say. Um, everybody in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Barnes, for doing all this. Thank you. He's, he's done a lot of work on that. Yes. Yes. He's done a lot of work, period. But he's done a lot of work. He's always doing a lot of work. Good. Um, human resources. Not for the public time.
Uh, um, Tina is ill this evening and can't be here. We do want to schedule a human resources and humane uh, department meeting together Monday, March the 2nd at 5.30 p.m. It'll probably take 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. It will be uh, closed because it is uh, about human resources. Okay. All right. I'm going to add something to the human, I mean, the humane. The street department, well, I guess I could have done it later, but the street department made the 36 by 36 inch sign mm -hmm. for the dog pound um, warning of dropping off dogs and, and pointing out that they're on camera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, did it say anything about the potential fine? Yes, it up to up to five hundred dollars. Yeah. So from here on out, then it's not really going to be a question of what they need to do and where how we handle it. So. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, police. Uh, just real quick. Uh, Crime stats for the month of January, we need to update it. Uh, calls to service is 1,444 calls, 152 traffic stops, 25 accidents, 39 alarm calls. <coughs> Officers were 18 burglaries, 62 disturbances. Uh, domestic violence incidents were 21, six fights, and 68 shoplifting or stealing incidents <coughs> in the month of January. Uh, been running about normal you know, for this time of year. Uh, any questions on that, this is also posted on our Facebook page, these stats. You can also look at those if you want to. <coughs> also, uh, in the coming months, you're going to see some advertising from the Family Counseling Center. Uh, they're wanting to sponsor a four main golf tournament to help sponsor the our D.A.R.E. program. It coincides with every year they have the golf tournament. This year they want the proceeds to go to D.A.R.E. Or D.A.R.E. Awesome. So, That's you know, a pretty, in, uh, pretty big so, golf tournament. Yeah, and they actually moved it up this year to yeah. the first part of the year. So, kind of excited about that. Hopefully, we'll raise some good funds for uh, our DARE program. But there'll be more on that if, in the coming months. Uh, next thing I got, I have two grant papers here I need to count signed by the Maryland Council. Uh, the, the sheets are identically the same. It's basically one is for our traffic grant and DWI grant program that, throw, that is reimbursed through MoDOT. Uh, it's been, continue that grant and keep it going. The second one is also through MoDOT. It's also for the uh, technology grant that we have coming up. We've been talking about computers in the car. We're going to try to do this in phases. Uh, just get initially what we have to have in order to get the digital ticket started and the rest of it we're going to put off until after October 1st. But I have to have this grant turned in by uh, March 1st. So we won't get any funds until October. So we'll kind of try to do that in funds. Uh, in, in, uh, in sections, it's going to save the city roughly about $39,000 out of this. So whatever savings we can get, uh, no guarantee we'll get the grant, but uh, we're going to try. Okay. So anyway, if you want to start with it or start one in the table, I just think everybody's fine. Yeah, well, we need to have a motion. Uh, motion. Second. Second. Uh, I'll second. Yeah, motion you second. Have two motion for each man. We, we, no, we can do one motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Still, is the weather? Ah, they work. They work today. They've been working on it. Yeah, uh, they worked yeah. on it today. They've got poles up and a lot of the wood up. Good, good deal. Uh, signs been placed on both ends of Ely Road. I know there was um, some more discussion about how that was uh, potentially of uh, speeding through there. So we put signs up on uh, the uh, speed limit sign to say radar enforced. Um, just trying to uh, curb speeding, and uh, I think that the police department is going to uh, still make patrols out there and see what can 
see what's going on. Um, secondly, we advertise for the 2020 concrete. It's in the PED news, um, the newspaper. Um, so when is that over, Mr. Westfield? When is that due? Uh, March, yeah, March 19th, I think. I I've got a couple of calls from people interested in doing the work. They're going to start getting with me uh, this week. All right. um, we planned on trimming a lot of trees this winter. Um, Mr. Westfield and the guys did, but uh, the weather has been a tad bit of a factor. So they've been doing what they could. Um, and that's pretty much it for a street, I think. Yeah. I'm sure he'll have 20 more things. <laughs> Mayor, council member. Uh, not really a lot. Like he said, we are trimming trees as we can when the weather permits. They did trim today. And uh, we're getting trying to get a handle on it. We're doing pretty good. We don't usually trim during the winter, but if you get caught up, we're doing it right now and it's gonna I think it'll help us out a lot in the long run. Uh, another thing going along with what he was talking about, uh, police department on Ely Road, uh, we put our traffic counter on Ely Road and it will tell speeds and time and uh, pretty much if it's a truck, three quarter ton, it, it tells a lot. It's got a lot of information on there. So we're gonna keep track of that a little bit and maybe we can tell the police department at what time of the day people are speeding down through there so maybe they can go down there at that time of day and, and catch them. But it'll, it, it'll tell the speed and uh, it would be nice if you could tell the license plate. Yeah, well, <laughs> we get one of them radar trailers that clicks it yeah. when it goes by. That'd be about the only thing I know on that, but we can kind of narrow down a time frame if it's like a certain time of the day or whatever. And that's all we got for the street department. So if y'all got any questions? Thank y'all. Thank you. Um, the big stormwater report that this thing's been turned in, Victor turned that in. And uh, we have the smallest city, but we have the biggest book. So we got even. Uh, we've got a signed contract with the pipelining company to uh, line uh, the pipe on Harrison Street, and we went together with the City Light Gas and Water to do that. Uh, we had to come up with $100,000 in, in work, and so between the two of us, we have that done. Uh, we budgeted $70,000 for it, and we ended up paying about $58,000. Uh, the weather, like you said, has been holding up our work. We've got two employees at the wet show right now looking at waste, uh, water, wastewater equipment, treatment, and transport. We've got, um, and then we've got that deal on uh, March that Victor's going to be at to get kind of the new information. The woman that's in charge of stormwater for the state new at her job. Uh, she's, it's, it's going to be a real challenge, I do believe what's going on because I don't know that anybody really has a grasp on what's going on with it. So it should be an interesting year for us all. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, industrial. Uh, we met um, last week. Um, had a good long meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, talked about things that uh, was potentially going to be happening. I don't know really can't say a lot of things because it's until it happens you can't say but um, progress is being made and hopefully uh, everything works out and be good but um, secondly I do need the triangle piece of property out by ARI at the industrial park um, see that gas and water would like to put a generator out there um, and basically, uh, I just need a motion to let them utilize that triangle piece of property. I'll put, make a motion for that. Put their generator out there. That's what we got a motion. Oh, All right. Any other questions? Dave's here with anybody? If anybody has any questions about it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, Mr. Dave. All right. Um, actually, 
number six unfinished was actually the new part that Mark just brought up. Uh, so under new business, uh, in your package you had the uh, approval of the ordinance for the insurance of the contractors. Well, I thought we were going to do a purchase of the South Bypass property. Um, you got uh, um, I think Okay. Okay. Uh, first read is an ordinance repealing sections 550.010C2 and 550.020 for the municipal code of the city of Kenneth to eliminate license and permit bonds. For tradesmen and enacting new section 550.010C2 requiring liability insurance for tradesmen. In the past, we have required for it to get a tradesman's license uh, that you have to either post a $5,000 bond or uh, show proof of $100,000 of insurance. This eliminates the $5,000 bond. Who makes it just insurance? Yes. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Second reading. An ordinance repealing sections 550.010C2 and 550.020 of the Municipal Code of the City of Kent to eliminate license and permit bonds for tradesmen and enacting new section 550.010C2 requiring liability insurance for tradesmen. Yeah, yeah, motion. Second. 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 Yeah, roll call. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Second one is uh, airport. What is the lease? Yeah, the approval. Do you have the uh, uh, airport real estate lease? And it's pretty much the same. It's a release. renewal of the same one. It's a yeah. renewal of what we've what, what we done before. Uh, motion. Just need a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. All right. Airport management agreement. Again, this is. Uh, with uh, dual flying service, it's uh, a renewal of what we've had in the past. Oh, my there's motion. no, there's no big changes or anything. No, there's no motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, All right. right. Motion carries. All right. Uh, agricultural lease for the airport. Again, it's just a renewal one-year lease for the farmland out of the out of the airport, and it's the I'll same lease that we've been doing for 20 years. So. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, approval of city abstract for January. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Then uh, next one was uh, approval of city's revenues and expenditures for January. Motion. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approval of the city bank balances. <laughs> I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Uh, I'm the only one that probably read them. Yeah. Uh, she's got them. <laughs> you read them. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Fair report. Uh, as time gets closer, we have uh, now three races that will be going on for the uh, election on April 7th. Wards 1, 2, and Wards 5. So uh, look forward to all that coming up and uh, uh, everybody getting out and voting and you know know who you're voting for and uh, you know, talk with them. Sit down and discuss everything that's going on. Uh, I still have my same statement that I'm pleased and excited about the opportunities that have been put forth to the city of Kennett about the future of the possible hospital in the town of Kennett. Uh, there's still progress heading in that direction. It is slow progress. Uh, but we are heading in the right direction uh, and uh, on March 10th for the council and for CLGW meeting we're trying to keep that date open. Um, we have a uh, uh, 
one person that is uh, a consultant that would like to have a meeting with all of us. And uh, that's going to be in the evening on uh, Tuesday, March 10th, if all the council can uh, uh, try and keep that date open. Uh, that would be great. Um, and earlier, whenever we hear uh, our uh, financial report, you know, for two months in a row now, you'll see where our sales tax is down. Uh, second month in a row, and this month it was all the way across the board. Uh, and uh, so shopping locally is, we are a sales tax city. We are 100% sales tax based. So it's important that uh, that happens. So uh, losing a couple, uh, you know, a grocery store here in town, we can start to see the results. Uh, there's all kinds of talk going on, and hopefully those talks will keep going in the right direction. Uh, but as far as any pen on paper or any announcements, you know, we don't have that. But it's still, you know, talks are going on. Uh, so, uh, uh, but besides that, it's just please shop local as much as possible and look forward. Okay. Uh, number nine, public comment. I'd like to introduce oh. someone. Okay. In the public. Um, Laura Ford agreed. I asked her to come this evening to give us an update. Um, she and Stan and all of his crew have really been working hard on the senior center. Uh, he has posted, and I wanted to bring it here, but my TV didn't cooperate. But he has on their Facebook page two small videos. One was made a little over a week ago, and one was made today showing the uh, just how quickly this is moving along, and we really appreciate it. We're excited about it, and I wanted uh, Laura to just come up and give us a brief update. Yeah, we're all really excited. The seniors are getting really excited because they're seeing progress. Um, the uh, in fact, when you go into the building, you can it's. You can see the definition of it now, and exactly really how big that building is. I mean, for the first time when I walked in today, the, the sheetrock is up in that dining hall, and that is one big dining hall. <laughs> so it will fit that, that walking track around it's going to be, be real good for them. <laughs> several trips around it, they're going to be able to sit down. <laughs> but uh, it's looking real good. And uh, so we're, we're hoping to be able to finish out the, the tax credits. We get probably 30,000, maybe 35,000 more. Then we'll be able to pretty much fund what we need, I believe, with, you know, with the city and everything to finish it out. Um, I'm putting a wish list up on, on the, the website. Uh, that's so that those items that, those extra items that we're going to need, such as big screens, you know, benches, you know, card tables, that type of thing, people will be able to go online, find out what we need, and donate those. What's the website? Uh, Kennedoaks.com. I just pulled it up, and the videos that you were talking about, it, it looks really good. Yeah, it, it's really coming along. We are really <clears throat> pleased. And I also want to say, we had a, a, a very good meeting, um, and we do have your check uh, for you and you. <laughs> and also, um, I guess this will need to be in the form of a... Um, <laughs> video. Watch that later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we wanted to also um, make a motion to have more funds available for them as they need because right now they're kind of in a crunch. Um, it's going to be done quickly, and then at that point they'll be able to level out a little. I'm probably not explaining this quite as well as either one of you, but but that was a one time per year request. No, but you can. I thought that you had said that we could. Well, for more. That's what we said outside. But there, but there's, but you got to make a formal request to purchase, like they, like they did last time. Right. And so just state the amounts that we need. Well, what it's for. And what it's for. The same, the same, same format as you used last time. Okay. 
All right, well then we'll just get that from you. Because uh, didn't you put it in writing for the 125? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what was, that's was the point I was missing then. And so we'll get that and then we'll get that uh, approved also. Right. Um, I also wanted to ask, since we, we got the first electric bill from the building, and of course that was more than doubled on that, that one building. And uh, and I'm I'm not sure exactly. Uh, there's a, I guess because it is industrial grid, that building, there is a, you've got the electric, but then and it was like three hundred and something, but there's another portion the of the huh, demand. demand. That's that, like six, that's on, on all three phase. David's here, he can explain that better than I can. But yeah, that goes that's with like all, 600 all the commercial buildings. Yeah, six hundred and something dollars. Well, welcome to the three phase world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's something that we're, we're probably going to have to put in a request is because right. knowing that this is going to be big. Yeah, you know, that was the whole purpose. David can explain it to you. In the end, for the 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 uh, tax to help support that that infrastructure. So anyway, we're, we've already seen it and only going to be, they've just been working for a month in it yeah. and everything, so we're going to probably request. David, is there any way to mitigate that three-phase charge or take it all, or, or, or <laughs> if, you, if you convert your three-phase to single-phase? Yeah. yeah. Do they need three-phase? You, you can do that. Unfortunately, I think the flip side of that is, if James can probably tell you, your load goes up on your single-phase and yeah. that puts you over into a demand charge as well. Okay. So there's, there's a reason demand there's over a certain phase. number of kilowatts on the single phase as well. So yeah. either way you look at it, <laughs> you will end up with a charge. Yeah. Okay. It's going to happen. I think it's 26 kilowatts where, where the, the demand kicks in on single phase. Yeah, if it goes on 25. Right. Well, then, then all the equipment. Do I? All the equipment that's in there is three phase now too. Oh, so yeah, you would have to change all that out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's we're done. not doable. I don't think we want to go yeah. that route. But Just we're we're all safety. excited. Everything is looking really good. Looking it will be that definitely that one stop for all of the seniors. The moment they get in, because when it's finished, they'll be able to get their hair done, their toenails done. You know, their blood pressure, their exercise. You know, their games, just everything keeping them busy all day in order to keep them healthy, which also lessens the load as they they get healthier. That means it's less <coughs> on the community, less on the state mm -hmm. and everything. So anyway, I want to thank you, you know, all of you for, for the help. Also, at any time, if you want to go over and just take a look, I know Stan... Stan will give you a tour. It's great. It's looking really good and everything. And you know, you know, age is one of those things that you're you're not gonna get out of. Everybody's gonna be seen be a senior sooner or later. And the alternative isn't good. So anyway, but uh, hopefully everybody will be able to utilize it when the time comes. And if you have Facebook, like the Kenneth Oaks Nutrition Center. Yes. Hey, Laura. Huh? And, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you.